Good morning, brothers and sisters. Um, as you can see, I'm home uh, according to the government directives, and I hope that many of us are. And even at a time like this, please allow me to encourage all of us. Uh, God has put some word in my heart in the book of Jeremiah, and uh, we will be looking at Jeremiah chapter 30. Now, as you all know that Jeremiah was a prophet of God, ministering to the children of God, the Israel and Judah, who were at this particular time in captivity. Uh, the Israelites were in captivity in Assyria, and the Judah were in captivity in Babylon. And so Jeremiah chapter 30 gives us two scenarios. The first is the prophet of God is giving us the detailed um, picture of what is happening to the children of God in captivity. But the other bit is giving us some hope of restoration and redemption. And I'm hoping that this can help us in lifting our hearts to the Lord, even at a time like this. Now, when we look at Jeremiah chapter 30, and I will just be selecting some few uh, verses to read. Jeremiah chapter 30, uh, my Bible has a title, Restoration of Israel. And of course, if you look at chapter, uh, in verses 2 and 3, that is a summary of indeed what God wants to do as far as restoration is concerned. However, before that restoration, we see Jeremiah giving us a picture a very disheartening picture of the things that are happening or of the pain that the people are facing in captivity. Listen to this. In verse 4, these are the words the Lord spoke concerning Israel and Judah. This is what the Lord says. Cries of fear are heard. Terror, not peace. As can see, can a man bear children? Then why do I see every strong man with his hands on his stomach like a woman in labor? Every face turned deathly pale. How awful that day will be. No other will be like it. It will be a time of trouble for Jacob. But he will be saved. In verse 12, we see a continuation of the state of the people of God. He said, this is what the Lord says. Your wounds is incurable. Your injury beyond healing. There is no one to plead your cause. No remedy for your soul. No healing for you. All your allies have forgotten you. They care nothing for you. I have struck you as an enemy will and punish you as all the choir, because your guilt is so great and your sins so many. Why do you even cry out over your wounds, your pain that has no cure? Because of your great guilt and many sins, I have done these things to you. Now, friends, I don't want to sound allegorical here and try to force our current situation to picture what is happening here but relatively it is we are hearing cries from every quarter cries of the increased number of those who are being infected by the coronavirus and cries of hundreds of people dying in a day in a week increasingly in number and we are hearing of several precautions that are being taken by several governments. And all these things sends a picture of fear and lack of peace within us. And you know, uncertainty that comes with us being home, and many, as somebody will put it, that many Kenyans rely on their daily bread as they work. And now without that kind of work, Many are hopeless and uncertain about what is happening. So the situation is almost 
a mirror of that which uh, was going on to the people of God in captivity. But as we read Jeremiah chapter 30, it's not only giving us a picture of what was happening, but it's also giving us a picture of hope. And so friends, look at this. The Bible says in verse 8, In that day, declares the Lord Almighty, I will break the yoke off their neck and will tear off their bones. No longer will foreigners enslave them. Instead, they will serve the Lord, their God, and David, their king, whom I will raise up for them. So do not be afraid, Jacob, my servant. Do not be dismayed, Israel. I will surely save you out of a distant place. You are descendants from the land of the exile. Jacob will again have peace and security, and no one will make him afraid. I'm with you, and I will save you, declares the Lord. Though I completely destroy all the nations among which I scatter you, I will not completely destroy you. I will discipline you, but only in due measure. I will not let you go entirely unpunished, though. The beautiful bit, even as it ends, I will, in verse 18, I will restore the fortunes of Jacob's tent and have compassion on his dwelling. The city will be built on her ruins. You know, the Bible finishes in verses 22 and says, So, you will be my people and I will be your God. Now, that is an amazing comfort, friends. And whenever I read this, partly as my devotion this morning and also as to share with you that there is a God in heaven who hears all our prayers. He understands our current situation. He knows the questions that you are asking. He understands the pain that you are going through. He understands the stress that we are having whenever we watch television and see all this kind of news. That is a God who will never forget his people. The Bible says, even though I have used this to punish you out of your guilt, you will be my people and I will be your God. And I am certain that when we trust in this God, we will be his people and he will be our God. May the King of Kings comfort you and comfort me with these words. That in as much as we are going through the terrible times, almost equal to that which the people of God were going through in Assyria and Babylon, there is hope. And that hope is found in no other person, no other philosopher, no other scientist. It is found in the King of Kings, whose name is God, the creator of heaven and earth. Be comforted. Shalom.